In 2019, the world's best Go player, Lee Sedol, retired from the game. Why? Because he was defeated by DeepMind's AlphaGo machine. Just imagine, the world's number one player retires from the game because he loses to a machine. In today's episode of The Pretentious Geek, we'll discuss what is it that drives humans to challenge AI and is the supremacy of the machines inevitable. Humans like to compete. Olympics, World Cups, club leagues and even school leagues. If there's a game imaginable, we'll compete. But what is it that changes when humans compete against a machine? The stakes are higher. The player doesn't belong to any club or team or nation, but represents humans at large. And we can't afford losing that game. Since machine learning came into being, scientists have been hoping to build a machine that can rival human cognition. It began in 1956 with the Los Alamos Scientific Lab building a machine that could play chess. But success didn't come until 1997, when IBM's Deep Blue delivered a defeat to the world champion Gary Kasparov. It was monumental, a machine that could defeat the best human chess player. It was the first time that a machine had threatened the intellectual progress of humans. But the technique that IBM used to defeat Kasparov was brute force. Which, let's agree, is not machine learning. It was generally accepted that computers would not be able to defeat humans at more complex games like poker or go, where a huge number of possible outcomes makes it difficult to use brute force. Pete Hute, American astrophysicist, famously said in 1997, it may be a hundred years before a computer beats humans at go. Maybe even longer. Well, he couldn't have been more wrong. 19 years later, Using a heuristic approach, DeepMind's AlphaGo employed a mix of traditional AI methods as well as new techniques such as the Monte Carlo tree search and defeated Lee Sedol 4-1. After defeating humans at Go, the next game was poker. Now games like chess and Go are perfect information games where information about other players is available to all the players. But games like poker are much tougher for AI to master because these are imperfect information games. In 2017, Libratus, an AI machine was pitted against four top-ranked human poker players in multiple games over a period of 20 days. And guess what? It resulted in a landslide victory for Libratus. And this was the first time that an AI machine defeated humans at an imperfect information game. The creators of Libratus say that they did not build it to just play poker. They also intend to use it in business negotiations, where imperfect information is at play. The next challenge in front of AI researchers is that of online gaming. Games like StarCraft, which is an imperfect information game, has real-time gameplay and a large action space resulting in over 10 to the power 26 legal actions at each point of time. Google's DeepMind is working on the software AlphaStar, which plans on overcoming these problems. As AI becomes better and better, it becomes clearer that the supremacy of humans at games is reaching its end. What actually happens when an AI beats a human is that it moves an inch closer towards general artificial intelligence. Google isn't spending billions of dollars with the purpose of defeating humans at Go, but the process of creating AlphaGo opens up new applications of AI. Like the Go programs may find its application in autonomous vehicles, where it's presented with millions of choices each second. Whether we like it or not, but competing against humans is what makes AI more human or maybe even superhuman. Hi guys, if you like this video, then subscribe to our channel Analytics India Magazine and keep watching The Pretentious Geek.